I think we ought to talk over this morning the very complex and subtle problem of what is meditation. It is quite a serious issue, and perhaps some of you will kindly pay sufficient attention to what is being said, if you care to. This word has, is now becoming so common, even the governments are beginning to use it. Even the people who want money are trying to meditate more, to get more money. They are trying to meditate in order to become quiet, so that they can do better business. And the doctors are practising meditation, because they will help them to operate properly, and so on and on and on and on. And there are different kinds of meditations, Zen, Tibetan, and the ones you invent for yourself. And with all this in mind, the Indian type of meditation, the Tibetan, the Zen, the encounter group meditation, and the aspiration to be, have a, a quiet, still, quiet, silent mind. Bearing all this in mind, let's try to find out, if we can this morning, what it is, why one should meditate, and what is the significance of meditation. This word has been recently been popularised from India, and people go to India and to Japan and other places in order to learn meditation, in order to practise meditation, in order to achieve some kind of result through meditation enlightenment, better understanding of themselves, have a peace of mind, whatever that may mean, and generally they have a little peace, but not peaceful mind. And the gurus have invented their own med type of meditation, and so on and on and on. Right? I'm sure you are aware of all this. And of course there is the passing fad which is called transcendental meditation. It, was, it is really a form of siesta in the morning, siesta after lunch, siesta after dinner, or before dinner, so that your mind kind of becomes quiet, and you can do more mischief afterwards. <laughs> so, consider all this, the various types and practices and systems, and question them. It is good to have doubt. It's good to have to be sceptical up to a certain point, like a dog on the leash. You must let the dog go occasionally, run freely. So doubt, scepticism must be kept on a leash all the time, but often it must be allowed to run free. And most of us accept 
the authority of those who say, we know how to meditate, we will tell you all about it. So, please, we are together examining the whole problem or the whole question of what is meditation, not how to meditate. But then if you ask, how am I to meditate, then you will find a system to meditate. The how implies a method. But whereas if you are inquiring into this question of what is meditation and why should one meditate, then we will never ask how to meditate. The very questioning, the very asking is the beginning of inquiry, which is the beginning of meditation. As we said, it's a very complex problem, and we have to go very slowly and hesitantly, but subtly into this problem, into this question. As we said during the last week, that we are investigating, that we are <coughs> inquiring into it, so that you are not listening to the speaker, you are asking the question to yourself and finding the right answer, <coughs> without accepting any kind of authority. especially the authority of the speaker sitting on this unfortunate platform. It doesn't give him any authority because he sits on a platform and talks. There is no authority in so-called matters of spiritual matters, if I can use that word, spiritual, in the matter of the spirit, in the matter of inquiry into something that demands very, very, very careful examination. So we are doing this together, not meditating together, but inquiring what is meditation, and from that discover for oneself, as we go along, the whole movement of meditation. Is this all right? First, I think one must be careful in observing that Meditation is not something that you do. Meditation is something entirely a movement into the whole question of our living. That's the first thing. How we live, how we behave, whether we have fears, anxieties, sorrows, we have, we are pursuing everlastingly pleasure, whether we have built images about ourselves and about others, we must, that is part of our life, and in the understanding of that life and of those various issues involved in life, and being free from those, actually being free, then we can proceed to inquire into what is meditation. That's why we have, for the last ten days or last week, we have said we must put order in our house. Our house is ourselves. Complete order. 
then when that order is established, not according to a pattern, but when there is understanding, complete understanding of what is disorder, what is confusion, why we are in contradiction in ourselves, why there is this constant struggle between the opposites, and so on, which we have been talking about for the last ten days or last week, Having put that in order, our life in order, and the very placing things in their proper place is the beginning of meditation. Right? If we have not done that, actually, not theoretically, but in daily life, every moment of our life, then, if you have not done that, then meditation is merely becomes another form of, of illusion, another form of prayer, another form of dem- wanting something, money, position, refrigerator and so on. 